Amen and amen. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Brother Hastings. Um, indeed, when you say we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. That's what keeps us going. Thank you for such a powerful prayer, my brother. May God bless you. Uh, without wasting time, I'm now introducing our speaker, uh, Pastor Crispin okay. Chisala, all the way from Zambia. Uh, welcome, Pastor. Yesterday, you taught us how we can also learn the training through Joseph the Dreamer, where you even told us that uh, the Heaven this University trains us to be compassionate, practice justice and mercy. I'm, I don't want to unpack too many things. I just want to give you time for you. You have so much to say to us. This is your time, Pastor. Welcome once again. Feel at home. We are your family. May you take uh, the stage. May you please unmute uh, Pastor Chris. Uh, Chris. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Valer uh, Valerie. I've always uh, been mentioning that uh, your enthusiasm is always a great blessing. I liked it when you said, if you can see my face, then you are alive. Thank you so much. Uh, may the Lord bless this great work that uh, you are doing. And I would also love to uh, say a big thank you to Brother Hastings for that uh, beautiful prayer, which has opened the portals of heaven and has allowed the um, the watchers of heaven to come and attend to the issues of uh, the network. Indeed, it has been a challenge. I was praying hard as I was trying to do my connection because I could see that the network was very unstable. We pray that uh, um, the, 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 the spirit of the Lord shall attend to, to this issue. Uh, I was just realizing yesterday that uh, time indeed flies. Today is Friday. And uh, truly time has gone. I realize I only have one day now to, to speak to us and that is tomorrow morning. It has been such a great, great uh, experience. Uh, without wasting time this morning, like I had promised, um, we, we want to share a message. We want to share a message. Um, let me just see if I can share my screen here. Um, okay. Okay, it's like I'm going to something else here. Um, okay. Uh, have I been enabled to share screen, Sister Valerie? not yet uh, pastor maybe try okay. again yes because uh i can only see i think uh i uh, can only see this other screen here not yet on our side it, it is telling me that only the host can share maybe if i could be made a co-host as well you are co-host. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Okay. The strange thing is that when I try to share, I can only see um, the screen for the Zoom and for the whiteboard and for the iPhone pad. Yeah, this, this is something the... Is, something is happening. We're getting there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. Oh, okay. It's it's ah perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to I would like to speak to us uh, on a subject: keep the anointing alive. Uh, keep the anointing alive. Uh, shall we just uh, have a word of prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of life this morning. 
thank you, Lord, for the uh, work that is uh, being done by Sister Valerie and Odambinga and the rest of the team. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer that was offered to us by Brother Hastings. And so, Lord, we pray that now in these few minutes, may you please speak to us that word of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, keep the anointing, keep the anointing alive. Um, I want to quickly go to uh, Saul and uh, David. Uh, Saul and David, and uh, the first thing I just want us to observe is that, uh, you know, both, both uh, Saul and David were anointed by Samuel, although at different times. We find that um, um, some, uh, uh, King Saul gets anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, and uh, six chapters later in 1 Samuel chapter 16, I mean uh, 16, verse 13, David is also anointed. What is interesting, what is interesting about these two is that uh, they were both anointed for the same position. They were anointed for the same position, but uh, the one that was um, incumbent on the throne for the anointing was actually Saul. And um, I was trying to understand why um, David also got anointed when Saul was still on the throne. What is it that had really happened? Why is it that um, um, David gets anointed while the King Saul is still on the throne and he had, he had received the anointing for the same position? And uh, when I went into the scriptures, I realized that uh, King Saul had actually been uh, rejected by the Lord. And it, and it never took long. It never took long after he was, uh, he was anointed. When you read in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11, the Lord is regretting. You know, the man gets anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 10, and five chapters later, God is already regretting. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11, I greatly regret that I have set up so as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. Just five chapters later, God is already regretting for having anointed and for having set up so as king of Israel. And um, this is very sad because. Uh, uh, you, you don't expect that a man that gets anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 10 can lose his anointing so early in 1 Samuel chapter 15. So the question is, what is it that had happened? What is it that had happened? It will take us, it will take us to what we have been talking about in this week. It takes us back to the issue of testing. Just this period uh, in which Saul was operating in his uh, anointing, a number of things had happened, which unfortunately proved the real character of Saul. And unfortunately, Saul could not continue in the anointing. Um, when you read Patriarchs and Prophets, page 627, uh, we are introduced to a test that was given to, uh, to Saul at, uh, at, at, at Gilgal. You know, she says, Saul had failed to bear the test of faith in the trying situation at Gilgal and had brought dishonor upon the service of God. But his errors were not yet irretrievable. And the Lord would grant him another opportunity to learn the lesson of unquestioning faith in his word and obedience to his commands. You see, this man... What had happened at Gilgo is that uh, he had been given a very special commandment to execute. But unfortunately, uh, so failed. He failed to actually demonstrate obedience to the word of God. And that, that you know, opened up failure in his life. But even if he had failed uh, the test at, 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 at Gilgo, there was still opportunity for him to correct his errors. There were still a number of tests that were coming his way because 
um, if you have been following very closely, we have been able to explain this week that uh, the Lord will always bring us from one testing point to another testing point. That's what the Lord does. And we, 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 we will not be able to, pro, to progress to another level until we have proved um, we have proved to be faithful at that point of testing because each testing point comes with its special learning point. There is always a learning point that, that, that is attached to every testing point that the Lord allows to come our way. So um, at this testing point at, at Gilgal, the learning point there, the learning point there was in, um, unquestioning faith in the word of God and obedience to his commands. And I want to mention, uh, friends, that uh, if there is something that the Lord wants us to be clear about, it's to be able to have unquestioning faith in his word and to be obedient to his commands. You know, when the Lord speaks, it is important to listen. When the Lord commands, it is important to obey. Some things that the Lord uh, speaks to us, you know, may not make sense. They may not make meaning. In fact, most of the times they don't make meaning. But there is, there is, there is, a, there is peace and there is confidence. There is joy. There is safety in taking God at his word. When the Lord tells you to believe, believe. When the Lord tells you to act, act. Take God at his word. That is what I call faith. You need to have faith in the word of God. Faith in the word of God. You need to take God at, at his word. And when you begin to believe God on a daily basis, what is happening is that that is making your faith to grow. You can, you can, you can never, you know, faith, faith is something that grows gradually. It's not something that just comes as a full package at a go. It is something that you develop on a daily basis. And, and the best way to develop your faith is to be following God and it is to be cooperating with God in small, small, small things. When the Lord tells you this, do it. When you learn that the Lord requires you to do this, do it. When the Lord tells you do this, just keep on doing. And that process of doing the, doing the word of God, it has a way of how it will make your faith to grow. It will grow to a point where you will then reach a point where you can believe, you can believe that uh, if I pray for this situation, things are going to change. And your confidence for that kind of a belief is because you have got a history with your God. You know what you have been through with your God. You know what your God has been able to do for you. You know what, you know how God has been able to come through for you in small, small things. So faith Faith is made up of small, small things, but faith itself is not a small thing. I repeat that one. Faith is made up of small things, but faith itself is not a small thing. It is built up by small experiences. It is built up by small experiences. But once you have built up faith inside you, it will stand for your good and it will be able to make you experience the wonders and the miracles of God. Faith. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. Now, what we are saying is that faith does not just come naturally like that. It is given to us naturally, yes, but it must be, it must grow. It must grow. So God will, will, will bring us to different testing points so that we can learn to have faith in the word of God. We can learn to trust and to believe the word of God. So unfortunately, this is what uh, King Saul had failed to learn. But there was yet another test that the Lord brought him to. Apparently, the final one. All right. And this final test came when Saul met with, 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 with the prophet and the prophet was trying to tell him what had happened. But unfortunately, he got angry at being rebuked. And that was a final test that came to him. And after failing that final test, unfortunately, Saul lost the anointing. I read this one, Prophets and Prophets, page 629. Saul had now been subjected to the final test. His presumptuous disregard of the will of God, showing his determination to rule as an independent monarch, proved that he could not be trusted with royal power as 
the vice gerent of the Lord. He could not be trusted with royal power as the representative of the Lord. He was now brought to a final test. Unfortunately, he disregarded the will of God. And he showed, he showed his determination to rule as an independent monarch. And because of that, he could not be trusted with royal power. He could not be trusted with, 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 with that authority of heaven. You know, beloved, we, we are slowly coming to the end of this thing. And if there is something that I have been trying to share with you, it is the fact that the work, the, the, the work that God has for you, the purpose that God has for your life, the work upon which you must enter, it is such a great work. It comes with heaven's approval. There is a lot that you can do. Uh, let, 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 me, let me mention to, 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 to us, friends, that you see, the, there is a work that the Lord wants to be done in the earth. We are at a time where the three angels' messages must be preached. We are at a time where the gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Men and women must see the Lord Jesus Christ. Men and women must be brought to the kingdom. And to be able to do that work, the Lord calls for workers that are disciplined. The Lord wants to do things. He wants to do things. But these things cannot happen when, 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 when the character, you know, when the, the, the abilities of God's workers are not refined, when we are not disciplined. Because, because doing the work of God comes with a certain amount of trust. For instance, if the Lord was to allow you to begin to perform miracles, are you sure that you will still remain faithful to God? Are you, are you, are you sure that you will still maintain that trust upon God? If things begin to happen in your life, if the ministry that God has given you begins to succeed, are you sure you will keep it that way? Or maybe somewhere along the way you will think that these things are happening because of your own power. When the Lord blesses your, 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 your ministry of leadership at your local church and your local church begins to thrive, are you sure you will still maintain the glory to God? When the Lord blesses your ministry of preaching, are you sure you will still maintain your trust upon the Lord? Or probably you will think that, that the success of your preaching ministry is because of your exegesis and because of your Hebrew and Greek and because of your voice. Will you still be able to look up to the Lord and trust that it is God working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure? Will you still be able to look up to the Lord and, and acknowledge that it is him that is leading. Will you still be able to do that? So what the Lord does is to make sure that before he can begin to, 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 to do those great things in you, before he can allow, before he can allow those big things to, to begin to happen in your life, he wants to be sure that those things will not make you lose your faith. That those things that will begin to happen, they will not make you to become, to become proud, but that you will still remain humble and yet doing the great things of the Lord. I believe that the Lord is watching us. I believe that the Lord wants to work in us. I believe there are great things that the Lord wants to do. But I believe also that the Lord is looking at our hearts and is trying to see whether, whether, whether we, we are able to still give him the glory when those things begin to happen. Because when you read in the Bible, you will come across men like so, who when God began to work through them, they thought that it was through their own power. And this is what we see of, 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 of Saul. He, he began to do things. Initially, he started very well. But later on, he thought that maybe what was happening was because of his own things, because of his own power. And the Lord showed him that it doesn't happen that way. And so the man lost the anointing of God. The Lord rejected him. 
And so when you read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, Samuel was even weeping over Saul. Then the Bible says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So while Saul is on the throne, he has been rejected by God. He is serving as a king, but he has been rejected by God. Whatever he's doing, he's only doing to himself. The man has been rejected by God. He has lost the anointing. And the anointing is moving from him to somebody else. It is moving from the king to a boy. It is moving from a king to an ordinary man in the kingdom. Samuel has, so has been rejected by the Lord. It is possible, my dear friends, that when you have not been able to learn from God, you can continue doing the forms of religion, but the Lord has forgotten you. The Lord has, 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 has left you. The anointing has left you. You are doing things just for yourself and for others to see, but the spirit of the Lord has left you. You have lost the anointing. And whatever you are doing is only being done for yourself and for others to see. But the spirit of God is not there. Now, what happens when the spirit of God is not there? When the spirit of God is not there, you are powerless. When the spirit of God is not there, you are doing things without power. And that is why today there are some of God's people, there are some religious people who perform religious activities without the spirit of God. When you are doing that, there is no power whatsoever having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We have a lot of Christians in the world today, but the impact, the impact of Christianity upon the world is very slow. It's very slow and low. Why is it like that? It is because many are operating without the anointing of the spirit of God. Today, I want to say, don't lose your anointing. Your anointing is your weapon. When the Lord anoints you, you must not lose that anointing. When the Lord begins to, 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 to work in you, to begin to try you, to begin to, to discipline you, don't lose your anointing. Don't, don't get angry. Don't lose your faith. When the Lord is sharpening that anointing, when the Lord is doing something to make that anointing actualize, don't give up on God, continue holding on. Now, in the interest of time, let me just give you an outline of what I'll share with you tomorrow because I, I, I realize that time may not allow us to pack everything together here. I'm going to show you how to keep the anointing because you've seen that uh, David, our uh, soul has been rejected. So the anointing now comes to David who is anointed as a young man somewhere between the ages of 10 to 15. And after, after David is anointed, we begin to see the anointing work in him. Number one, he kills Goliath, all right? Number two, he begins to suffer persecution from Saul, from Saul, who has been rejected by God. And you are going to see that the, the, the majority of the chapters in the book of 1 Samuel, they really talk about the persecutions that David, you know, went through. At one point, we see David even dwelling in the mountains and wilderness of Ziph, running away from the persecutions of Saul. And finally, we see David becoming a king at the age of 30. Now, from the time he was anointed, from the time he was anointed, you can see that there is a gap. Uh, anointed somewhere between 10 to 15 and becoming a king at the age of 30. So what was happening to those uh, 10 plus years, all right, between the time he was anointed and the time that he became king? During that time, David was, the anointing in David was being tested. That is what was happening. So the principal point that I, I, I am going to show tomorrow is that from the time you are anointed to do something for God, it may take time for that anointing to actualize. So there is the process of being anointed for the work of God, and then there is the period of actualization. When, when now the anointing is actualized, where you step into the anointing now to begin to work according to what the Lord has done, to begin to, begin to work accordingly. So there is this period, and this period varies for some people, it can take about 10, 15 years. Others, it can even take 40 years, like in the case of, uh, of Moses. 40 years of the anointing being tried and being proved. So my prayer is that uh, as the Lord is now working in you, you know, sharpening you, 
preparing you for the great work that he has created you for. As he is testing you during this time to prove your anointing, my prayer is that don't lose that anointing. Don't lose that anointing. Be like David who kept the anointing. I'll show you tomorrow how at one point he almost lost hope and wanted to, to do things in his own power. But the Lord knows how he does these things. So for, for this morning, my dear friends, my prayer is that may the Lord help you to keep your anointing. Don't lose your anointing. Don't be like so who was working and yet the anointing was long gone in his life. But today, as long as you can hear this voice, today, as long as you can hear the word of God and you can hear that small voice speak to you, you have not lost your anointing. Amen. Your anointing yeah. is still yeah. with you. Keep holding on to it. The Lord is still waking up for you and it shall be well in the name of Jesus. Shall we just pray together? Gracious Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful for your love and for your grace. Thank you, Lord, because you have anointed us for great things. You have anointed us. We may appear simple, but you have anointed us for extraordinary tasks. We may look simple, but you have anointed us for complicated things. We are ordinary men who have been called to do extraordinary things. So I pray for all my brothers and sisters on this platform that, Lord, each one of them, you will bless them. Each one of them, Father, you will keep them, that they will keep the anointing, that are those, Lord, who have who have been moving from test to test, from point to point, give them the strength to continue holding on with you as you are sanctifying them and giving them power to be able to achieve the work that you have put upon their hearts. Bless us now, Father, as we enter into our session of prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Indeed, indeed, faith is the victory as we have learned today. I liked it, Pastor, when you said faith is made up and built up by small experiences, but it's not a small thing. And so we turn to thank the Lord for teaching us about faith this morning. And let us not be like Saul who trusted in himself and then the Lord rejected him. And tomorrow, I can't wait to hear about this anointing that from the time you're anointed, it's a process, still it's actualized. The period also differs from man to man, from person to person. Oh, I so I'm not saying much because our brothers and sisters always comment and are on point with what the pastor is preaching. So please read, read, 